Hey, Shelly. Is now a good time to talk? I'm really sorry to pry, but I just feel like I kind of have to ask. Why were you eating out of a dog bowl earlier? Is there something going on that I should know about? I see that. I, I was just kind of surprised to see that. Oh, no. Uh, did you really see me doing that? Oh, that is so, so embarrassing. I am so sorry that you had to see something so strange. I hope it didn't put you off too much. No, no, sorry. I'm not asking because I was upset by it or anything like that. I guess I just wanted to know why it is that you were doing that. I mean, is there a reason why you were eating out of a dog bowl? Is that, is that something you do often around here? Oh, don't worry. It's totally fine. There is nothing to worry about when it comes to that at all. It's just a little something I do now and then, but it really is nothing to worry about in the slightest. I'm sorry, you just enjoy eating your meals out of a doggy bowl? Is that really what's going on around here? Because if that's the truth, then I really don't care what you do as long as it's safe and you enjoy it, of course. But if that's the truth, then I don't see why you would want to hide it. I mean, when you're eating out of there, when you're eating out of there, you look like you didn't want anyone else to see what you were doing at all, you know? Oh, <laughs> uh, you got me there. I was just lying about doing it now and then. I don't even know why I said that to begin with. But the thing is that I just broke some plates and there weren't any more in the house. So since I broke the plates, I told everyone that I wouldn't mind having to take my meal out of the donkey bowl, like you saw. I see, but that's the other thing. My family doesn't own a pet at all. So I don't even understand why they would own a doggy bowl to begin with. Shelly, please. I'm really not mad or anything like that, but... But would you just please tell me what exactly is going on here? Okay. Uh, I, I guess I have no choice but to be honest with you. I'm eating out of a dog bowl because your mom asked me to. Well, more like ordered me to. Wait, what? You're trying to tell me that my mom is forcing you to eat out of a dog bowl? Is that really true? No, wait. For forget I said that. I didn't mean that at all. I, I swear, please, just forget everything that I've said about this whole thing. Let's just drop this and never, ever bring it up again. After all, this is the first time that you've been back home for something like three years, right? I really would rather that you relax and not have to worry about my problems. Shelly, please, just wait one second. I mean, do you really think that I'm going to be able to enjoy my time here at all knowing that something like this is going on? Please, you can talk to me. You can trust me, okay? I just want you to tell me what it is that my mom has, you, has told you to do. Well, if I tell you what's been going on around here, do you promise not to tell another soul? I mean it, you can't tell anyone else at all what I'm about to tell you. Do you understand me, Charles? Of course. You have my word that I'm not going to mention any of this to anyone else. Now, can you please just tell me what the heck is going on around here? It's true. What I said about your mom ordering me to eat my meals out of a dog bowl is all true. And honestly, I'm not sure how much more of this I'm going to be able to take. Shelly, I'm so sorry that you had to go through all this. What in the world happened between you and my mom that would make her want to treat you like this? There's been a lot that's happened between us, actually. It's all been so much, though. It's almost hard to remember. At first, it wasn't this bad, though. She would complain about my cooking and start throwing away my food. Then she even started throwing away my belongings that she said were useless and taking up space around the house. She even threw away all my makeup. She told me that if I had time to be putting on makeup, then I should have time to clean around the house. But I had so many nice products. I, I don't know what to say. Shelly, I am so, so sorry. This is all just so horrible to hear. What makes it even worse is that I don't think anyone has a clue about any of this. But it isn't all your mom's fault, so please don't think that. It's almost my fault. It's my fault for being such an idiot. And you know how much of a perfectionist your mom is. So anytime I made a mistake, she would always let me know that I was wrong right away. But over time, she would do with the insults and put downs and it just got worse. Michelle, please. Shelly, please. You can't blame yourself for any of this. Everybody makes mistakes 
And even if you do feel like you need to make up for them somehow, what my mom is doing to you just isn't right. You aren't dumb and you don't need to be perfect. You're human just like we all are and you deserve respect. But what I really want to know is if my brother Quinn is doing anything about this. I actually haven't told Quinn that any of this is going on. And your mom is always so kind to me whenever there are other people around. But I know that her anger is just building up inside of her. I can see it in her eyes. The way she looks at me when no one else is. I can see the hate she has for me. Although now that I think about it, I think that your mom really started to get about all of this after your father passed away. I see, but are you saying that that means that my mom has been treating you in the way that you described to me just now ever since my dad died? That's right. But I guess that means that it's been about as long as you've been out of the house, hasn't it? Although I guess it really does make sense. After all, when that happened, the time that I was spending alone with your mom at home increased by a lot. I know I should have been coming home more often to check in on everyone. I'm so, so sorry that you've been dealing with all of this, Shelly. I'm even more sorry that I didn't notice so I could put a stop to it. Please don't blame yourself for any of this, Charles. It really isn't your fault at all. I wasn't trying to make you feel bad for what's been going on with me. <sighs> now look at what I've gone and done. I've made you feel guilty about something that you have nothing to do with. Shelly, you really are too nice, but did you realize that? I think it might do you some good to be just a bit more mean or angry from time to time. I mean, if everything that you've told me is true, that means that my mom has been treating you like this for the last three years. Has it really only been three years? I don't believe it. It feels like it's been much, much longer than that. But I still don't get it when I think about it. I mean... Your mom was such a nice lady when the two of us first met. I think that's part of the reason why I blame myself so much for what's going on. I just assume that whatever caused the change in your mom must have been something to do with me. I know what you mean. I've noticed things changing for my mom as well. I've noticed her attitude getting worse and worse. But still, I just never thought in a million years that my mom would get this bad. I mean... I don't care what's happened between the two of you. To make you do something like eat out of a dog bowl is just unacceptable. I know, but I'm trying to tell you that it's really not as bad as it seems. I mean, <laughs> I love dogs. I really, really do. Shelly, I think you and I both know that that is not the problem here. But I will say that I really admire the brave face that you're putting on in spite of all this. I mean, to have been subjected to this kind of treatment by your own mother-in-law? Well, anyways, just remember the promise that you made to me, okay? You promised me that you wouldn't tell anyone at all about this, remember? Yes, I know. You won't have to worry about this at all, but, but I'm going to have to talk to my mom about this, of course. I mean, I know that you don't want this to continue, right? You can't actually be happy living this way. Well, I'll admit that it's not fun. It's actually really, really hard. I mean, that I'm sure that it is. And you don't deserve to be treated like this. So please just leave everything to me. I'm going to make sure that something like the things that you've been going through never ever happen to you again. Charles, thank you so, so much. For everything. I mean it. Hey mom, are you there? I was wondering if you wouldn't mind chatting with me for a bit here. There are a few things I'd like to talk to you about if that's alright. Oh, Charles. You know, I'm so, so happy that you're finally home. It really has been so long since I've had my little boy back here. So, of course, we can talk. Let's talk about whatever you want to talk about. I'm glad that you said that, Mom, because I kind of want to talk about Shelly. I was just curious. I was just curious what you think of her. You want to know what I think about Shelly? Well, why would you want to know something like that? Well, I guess I just wanted to make sure that the two of you were getting along okay. I mean, have there been any kind of issues between you two? It seems to me like things are going well around here, but you can never really know without asking, right? I guess I'm just asking because I'm thinking about when I'm going to get married, and I just wanted to ask about how living with your daughter-in-law has been going for you. I see. Well, that makes sense, I suppose. Hmm. What can I say about Shelley? 
Well, if I can really be honest with you, I think that she might just be a little slow from time to time. And she can certainly stand to improve her direction following. Really? Is that how you feel about her? So you think that she doesn't really do a good job of listening to you when you tell her to do things? I just mean that these things happen. But as we can clearly see, the fault is usually overwhelmingly on the daughter-in-law. But what else can you really expect with how spoiled the younger generations are these days? That's why it's up to the ladies of my generation to whip these young girls into shape and make sure they know how to be good wives for their husbands and good daughters-in-law to us. Although, I suppose, given how sensitive people your age are these days, some people might actually call this bullying. I see. Well, I guess now I feel I have at least a better sense of how you think about Shelly. Thanks for telling me all of that. Well, of course, I would never, ever hide any secrets from you. Besides, I'm sure that you know what I'm talking about after coming here and interacting with her. So I guess that means that you would be saying that you've been pretty strict in terms of how you've been interacting with Shelly then? Of course I have. She's left me with no choice in the matter at all. And as her mother-in-law, I just had to take it upon myself to make sure she flies straight. But now I'm curious, Charles. Has Shelley told you anything about me at all? I just know that she could be such a crybaby sometimes and will tell the craziest fibs about how horrible I am. Just to try and get people to feel bad for her. No, of course not, Mom. Shelly hasn't told me anything bad about you at all. It's just that this is the first time I've been home in I don't know how long. And anyways, I guess I was just a little surprised when I saw that Shelly was eating from a dog bowl the other day. I'm just curious. Did you tell her to do that or did she choose to do that on her own? What was going on with that? Of course I was the one who told her that she had to eat out of the dog bowl. You have no idea the lengths that I have gone to try and get that girl to fix her life. But all she does is cry and cry about how unfair her life is. I know that all she's really trying to do is get out of doing things like taking care of the house, like what she is supposed to be doing. So that's why I made her start eating out of the bowl. If she wants to act like an untrained dog, then she'll eat like one until she learns. Mom, are you for real? Do you really think that is any way to treat another human being? And just what is that supposed to mean? I've already explained to you that I'm doing what I'm doing in order to make Shelly into an even better person. So you really think that you're doing all of this for Shelly's sake? If that were true, then why don't you treat Shelly the way that you've been treating her in front of my brother, huh? I mean, I was talking to him a bit about this, and he told me that he had no idea that Shelly was going through any of this. So if you were keeping it from him, it must have been because you didn't want him knowing what you were doing, right? Of course not. You're getting this all wrong. I just didn't want to give your brother any more to worry about. You know how busy he is with work things all of the time. I just didn't want to take up more of his time with something like this. After all, what matters most is that he's able to concentrate on doing his work. But I still don't understand. What is it about Shelly that makes you hate her so much? What did she do to you? Again, Charles, you're getting this all wrong. I never ever said that I hate the girl. The thing is, though, is that she's just a bit dim and she needs someone to tell her how to be the best version of herself that she can be. And she can do that by listening to every little thing that I have to say to her. It really isn't my fault that she's so useless. But I can assure you that I am doing everything in my power to make sure that she doesn't stay that way forever. You should be thanking me for all I'm doing. So you really think Shelly is useless, Mom? I have to say that I'm really shocked. I just didn't think that you were this kind of person. I mean, you've given so many different excuses about Shelly, but all I'm hearing is that you just plain don't like her, isn't that right? And so what? It's my house, and I'm allowed to like or dislike the people that are staying here. After all, she's the one that married my son and moved in with me. I get that, Mom, but still. Can you really not see just how horrible you've been treating her? I don't care what you think. I know what's best for her. And I am doing what I am doing for her sake. 
She has to eat out of a dog bowl until she remembers what it's like to be a good person. But anyways, enough about that dumb girl. You shouldn't be letting her ruin the time that you have being back at home with your family. I can't do this anymore, Mom. I don't want anything to do with you ever again. As far as I'm concerned, you are not my mom. What do you mean by that? Are you really going to act this way because of the way I treat some dumb girl who couldn't take orders correctly to save her life? You know, I really wanted to believe that I wasn't getting the whole picture. That I was missing something that would explain this whole situation and make it all make sense. But I'm afraid that it's just as I feared. Maybe even worse than I feared. But I'm afraid that if this is the way you want to choose to treat people, then I can't call you my mom. Charles, what in the world are you going on about? I mean, you haven't been home to visit your family in three years, and this is the way that you're going to behave? Surely you didn't come all this way back home just to get into a fight with your family, right? I'm sorry, Mom, but there's nothing to fight about. I know what I need to do now. I've made up my mind. You are not my mother anymore. Please, Charles, you're just acting ridiculous right now. I mean, what in the world has gotten into you? You used to be such a sweet boy who would always listen to what I said. Are you really going to try and ruin things with your own mom just for this dumb woman? Why do you have to insult her in every breath that you mention her, Mom? Why can't you just let Shelly live the way that she chooses to live? Why do you have to try and control every bit of her life? I'm sorry, Charles, but you don't live here and you don't know what it's like sharing a space with her. I am only doing what I have to do in order to keep my house running. And how in the world does making her eat from a dog bowl accomplish that, huh? What is even the point of that? It is part of an elaborate system of rewards and punishments that I've set up for Shelly, if you must know. You mean it goes even bigger than this? You have this whole thing systemized? Now that really is just taking things way too far, Mom. What is the matter with you? Don't you have any shame at all? I'll give you one more chance to own up to the horrible way you've been treating Shelly. And does what do I even have to own up to? I know that I'm right, and that's the end of it. I don't have anything to own up to or admit because everything I've been doing has been right. Okay then, Mom. Okay then, Mom. If you're really going to be like this, I think I have to ask you to leave the house. Excuse me? What do you mean by that? What do you mean, leave the house? I mean that I bought this house, right? It's my name on the deed. Of course, when I did, it was because I wanted to make sure that you would have a place to live when it was clear that Dad wasn't going to make it. But you can't live here if you're going to treat Shelly this way. Uh, no, hold on just a second. You're not really serious about that, are you? I mean, that's taking things way too far. The only person taking things too far here is you, Mom. You were acting like some kind of school bully when you should be the adult here. You should be the adult here. Well, I refuse to support someone who treats another human being the way that you treat Shelly. Now get out. Wait, no, you can't be doing this to me. I'm your mother. Oh, don't worry. Neither you nor Quinn are going to be staying here any longer. What is that supposed to mean? What are you trying to pull here? I've noticed that Shelly has bruises on her knees and back. I tried to ask her about where those come from one day, and she refused to tell me. Well, I could tell from looking in her eyes that it was as I feared. So then... You're telling me that you're really going to choose this other woman over your own mother and brother. I can't believe it. While you were busy psychologically torturing Shelly, you were standing by while Quinn abused her physically. Oh, please. Nobody was torturing or abusing anybody. This whole thing is just getting to be ridiculous. Except for the fact that I have video evidence of both you and Quinn treating Shelly horribly. What do you mean? What video? What are you talking about? I'm talking about the fact that I have footage that was recorded in private while you had no idea that you were being watched. I don't care what you say. I'm still not going to be moving out. You really are horrible. Do you know that, Mom? I know all about how Shelly is always the first person to get up in the house. First, she has to pack Quinn's lunch for work. Then she makes breakfast for the two of you. After that, you make her do all of the cleaning and all of the washing and cleaning around the house. Then you make her cook your lunch, do the shopping, cook dinner, and fold all the laundry. You've been treating Shelly like a servant, not your daughter-in-law. For the last time, I'm doing all of that for her sake. Why can't you get that? 
If I didn't tell her what to do, she would be sitting around on the sofa watching TV all day. And just what's wrong with taking a day off where that is all you do now and then, huh? Because from what I've heard, Shelly barely has any time to sleep with how busy you're keeping her. And yet you insist that it's all for her sake? I have had just about enough out of you. You have no idea what it's like to be a mother-in-law. I am the matriarch of this family, and what I say goes. And so the truth finally comes out. Well, at least we both know how you feel about your role in the family. We'll see how well it go. We'll see how well that goes for you, though. How could you do this, you horrible, evil woman? How dare you go and tell my son about what's been happening? Don't you realize what you've done? You've gone and ruined my whole family. Dee, what do you mean? I haven't done anything. I haven't told anyone anything, I swear. Don't you play stupid with me. I know that you told Charles all about what you and I have been getting up to here. And now, thanks to you, Charles is throwing me out of the house. Do you realize that? Just what are you going to do to fix this? But I didn't even do anything. I really didn't, I swear. Oh, please. The least you could have done would be to try and confront me yourself instead of send my son to fight your battles for you. This is exactly why I knew that it was up to me to train you well. But clearly, you don't even know the meaning of the word gratitude, or else you wouldn't have done this. I have had just about enough out of you, Dee. Excuse me? What did you just say to me? How dare you talk back to me? Don't you realize just how much trouble you're in right now? Oh, shut up already, won't you? Do you really expect me to be grateful for what you've put me through? You've done nothing but make my life a living hell ever since I moved here. What? What's going on here? I don't understand. You're not supposed to talk to me like this. Well, I am. And what are you going to do about it, huh? Did you really think that I wasn't getting angry under the surface this whole time? No, I just... What do you mean? What has gotten into you? You know, I don't think that Charles quite understood my point of view about all of this. He seemed to think that I was taking all of this crap from you because I was weak. But that isn't true. I was just hoping that you would burn yourself out of all your bullying. I had hoped that if I put my good foot forward and showed you how eager I was to be a member of this family that you might change your ways. But I guess my leniency has just the opposite effect on you. I suppose it all does work out in the end though, considering the fact that you're being evicted. What are you talking about? Who are you and what have you done with Shelly? This isn't right! You have no idea the kinds of things I'm capable of. I was just biding my time, subjecting myself to the abuse you and your son poured on me. But really, I was just being thorough in my collection of evidence. I wanted to make sure that there wouldn't be room for any doubt at all. You mean that you did all this on purpose? This was all part of your plan to get Quinn and I kicked out of our own home. I wasn't tricking you at all. Like I just said, I only had the patience to let you set yourself up for failure. I knew it was only going to be a matter of time, and I guess that time has finally come for you. And now you and your no-good rotten son are going to end up homeless on the streets. There was no trick, though. Just good old-fashioned patience. You. You're horrible. I didn't think that you were like this. You lied to me. Sorry, shouldn't you and Quinn be packing? I can't imagine that Charles is going to let you stay around here that much longer, right? I don't believe this. You're really going to go through with this. You're going to kick your own mother out onto the streets? But I still don't get it. How can you choose this ugly, stupid girl over your own family? Doesn't make any sense. And that's just that. That's just it, Mom. Unlike you, I don't only see people in the way that they can do things for me. You were nothing but a horrible, manipulative woman to Shelly. And it's clear she needed to be free of you. But son, surely you must know that I don't have any money. I don't even have a job. What am I supposed to do? Please, we're family. 
Yeah, you were supposed to take care of me when I got older, not abandon me like this. I already told you that I'm not your son, and I don't care what you do. Now, as far as I'm concerned, this is just kicking out a couple of quarters in my house. You don't really mean that, right? That's horrible! Don't you dare even start with me about what's horrible and what's not. It's clear to me that you haven't done any reflecting about how awful you've been treating Shelly at all. But to make up for all the horrible things you've been doing to her, I'm going to let her keep this house. Please, Charles, please don't do this. I promise that we won't ever treat her poorly again. How about you save all your excuses for the judge? I'm sure that a court is going to pay a lot more attention to what Shelly has to say than what you did. That was the last time that I messaged my mom. After that, I blocked her and everything. I realized that she would only pester me about not punishing her, but she would never admit that what she did was wrong. After that, her and Quinn were forced out of the house. I heard that the two of them moved into a tiny cramped apartment together. I suppose they really couldn't afford a better place after settling out of court with Shelly about how about all the horrible things that they had put her through. I offered Shelly the house, of course, but she said there were too many painful memories there and decided to sell it instead. It's been a few months since all of that happened. I haven't heard from my mom or brother ever since. As for Shelly, we still keep in touch. I've heard that she has a new boyfriend and he's much more kind and respectful to her than Quinn ever was. Shelly even told me that she was pregnant and asked if I wouldn't mind letting her child call me uncle. I think we both realized that we lost people in our lives that we had thought were precious to us. I'm only happy that Shelly was able to get out of that situation and into a much better one. But I'm very grateful that she still remembers me and keeps me close.